low burn like better than than he does and it was just it was kind of a nice nostalgic place to be you know i think people forget um john stewart has not been doing nothing one of the things that he's been doing is going to capitol hill to remind everyone that the 9-11 first responders still need assistance Mm -hmm. and we need to continue to fund that because at the very least pay their medical bills Mm mm-hmm yeah. He is for what is good for the people. And that's not always what's good for politics. That's not always what's good for Democrats as a political party. And that's not always what's good for Republicans as a political party. But what he is always for is for what's right and just for the people. Yeah. And when his delivery is not going to be partisan, yeah, it's that's going right. to be honest because folks, you know, Ronald Reagan becoming a, a, a president was encapsulated. The, the shock and awe that we should all have about it was encapsulated in Back to the Future. Yes. When, when Doc Brown says, what? The actor? <laughs> Great we Scott. are electing people to a job that is not a, po- a, a, a popularity contest. Yeah. This is not Mean Girls. Yeah. This is a person who is boring, who is productive who is focused who is intelligent yeah. who knows about international issues who has a background in politics who not just politics in general because they were like helping fundraise no someone who actually went to school yeah. these are people who want to be bureaucratic they're not for show if you want a show we had like the west wing we have yeah other shows that you can watch but our government should not be a, a stage no it's or, supposed or to be boring like this, this is this is us eating our spinach and if we if look if we just have candy bars if we just eat a bunch of sugar uh, then we're gonna feel bad we feel good when we eat boring stuff <clears throat> that has fiber and vitamins and maybe doesn't like like thrill our taste buds to the absolute max but is but makes our body work and everything is contingent upon that not just the, like the sugar high that you get off of like seeing Donald Trump like you know kick someone in the groin metaphorically it's like like and you, and also um we used to see you know when i grew up everybody was saying yes anyone can be president and yes everyone anyone can but it was something you had to aspire to they weren't saying you Schmo can be president. They were saying, if you aspire to be someone who is exceptional, yeah. who is empathetic to who can be a representative of a moral, just America embodied, yeah. encapsulated in this one person through their character, through their demeanor, yeah. through their actions, past and present and hopefully future. That's what we were aspiring to be when they said you can be president. They didn't mean you could get a bunch of signatures and put your name on a ballot. Mm -hmm. That's where we get Marjorie Taylor Greene from. That's where we get Lauren Boebert from. (laughs) What they meant was if you can rise to the occasion and become a person that people can look up to and aspire to be, then you can be a leader of this country. What happened to that? And we, can we get that back, please? I would love to get that back. I would I would love to get someone that that we can look up to, uh, ad- admire, you know, for their uh, for the, the positive values and, and, and the strength of, uh, of of character and, and their guts. And uh, and I would love to see, you know, I think Fawny Willis has a future. I think you know she she has she has guts and I just loved seeing her respond on the stand to to this inquiry about her personal life and it just it, it, I I I thought she she just like she engaged in that so so well I you know I, I just think that this is such a completely ridiculous inquiry I mean they they have to make it because they have to 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 see if like one side or the other was put at, at a disadvantage, but how conceivably with her and anything that she did in her personal life, as has been described, disadvantage Trump and his side of the case in any way, like, like it, it is none. It, none whatsoever. This doesn't have anything to do with her. So she yeah. had a relationship. So money, uh, like, you know, was 
different people paid for different things that they they did. That doesn't disadvantage Trump at all. It doesn't pertain to him whatsoever. This whole thing no, is because it, the it, case it, yeah. is about. Uh, election fraud, and it's about mm-hmm. what he did with Raffelsberger. Yeah, and it's about the phone calls. It's not and about. And she pointed that out. She is the one who's on trial, and yet, yet she is the one who has to get up there as a black woman and answer all these questions and be the center of negative uh, attention, as like always seems to be the case in our country. Because now we're not talking about the merits yeah. of the case because yeah. he doesn't because he loses on the merits of the case every right. time. Go back right. to all the cases that were brought. I think there were 69 or 70 of them mm-hmm. uh, during the election was stolen bullshit. Yeah. And all of them were tossed out based on the merit. One of them got through, but just on a technicality. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so listen, folks, he wants to not talk about what he did. And and not the fraud that he enacted and not the phone calls that he, the perfect phone calls he made where he pressured people, where he threatened people, because that's the merits of the case. He wants to talk about what Fonnie Willis was doing with some yeah. dude. And I understand that you wanted to look into this to make sure that there is no conflict of interest. That is yeah. acceptable. What's happening here is a deflection. And as long as we're talking about this, we're Mm. not talking about the actual problem, which is why we're here in the first place, because he tried to steal an election. Exactly. Exactly. It just turns into a big fucking circus. And, and we end up like not focusing on the, the oh so imperfect phone call. And, uh, and I, I would like to spend some time focusing on that. I would also like to spend some time focusing on Matt Gates's oh so imperfect texts because I seem to remember a couple of years ago that he was accused of of uh, of underaged uh, sexual liaisons. Yeah. And, and now all of a sudden, wow, it turns out that there are texts of him actually uh, engaging with with these individuals that uh, media organizations have obtained. And and he has like it's just amazing to me that we've managed to forget about all of this. Maybe maybe because Trump like has so much media gravity and and sucks all the oxygen out of the the room. Uh, we forget about Matt Gates. I don't know what he's been sucking, but it hasn't been good. And and he just needs to get out of there. I mean, there are there are he, he's just such a vile individual on so many different levels and i'm so glad that this is coming back into the media consciousness because because it's not just donald trump it is a a system of trump followers and and megats that uh are are, are thoroughly corrupt from top to bottom and and this guy is just a perfect example of that yes when trump accuses someone of something he's doing it Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Trust me. And it's not like, oh, you have to dig like he's literally doing it and it's projection. And the Republican Party has adopted that. They're not talking about politics for yeah, the well, benefit they, of F- the Fonnie Willis couldn't ap- afford hush money. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, because, you know, that's that's not racist at all. Right, exactly. Or sexist. Exactly. Yeah. But and these these people are just the problem is. Like we were talking about just a moment ago, anybody is running and getting voted for because it's a popularity contest or because people want to rock the boat and see what happens for the entertainment value, for the lulls. And the problem is that now now we're seeing the fruits of that labor. Thank you very much. Yeah. We have dysfunctional government. We have people in power for um, for the dumbest reasons yeah. who are who are dirt gross disgusting who are immoral predators, people who are criminals like yes and george santos yeah oh my god it it, 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 it it's very interesting to see that that uh, that seat was so uh readily flipped uh in in his absence <laughs> it was it, it was close though it was closer than i would have liked but the exit polling was all about how this bs with the uh border mm-hmm. and 
they're just they've had enough. And you notice my, really my was were... impeached by one vote. And if that and if it, it was helped, the night before, that's right. If it had been a day later, he could have been sworn. And in they did a... that on purpose. I, I think they knew they were going to lose that. I know that's so fantastic that we better get this vote in, and make sure that we could actually impeach. And and that and that's it's amazing and how for many what? things are going on. For yes. what? Because now, yeah. see, that was a talking point. Mm-hmm. So now they've done it. So now on the campaign trail, you're going to hear, well, we impeached Mayorkas. Mm -hmm. And we all know why. And uh, what about this uh, inquiry into, I'm going to get into this on my show because, wow. But um, they lie, folks. They just lie. This inquiry into Biden that was heavily, not all, but heavily based on a informant for the FBI who just made up some absolute hmm. bullshit. Hmm. Go and, figure. you know, I'm I'm with Jared Mouskowitz. When did Comer know this and how much did he know? Because yeah. as far as, like, I can see September of last year, he should have known that this was horse manure and he was pushing it anyway. Yeah. And it, they were making it the star attraction of their inquiry into Biden. Because so, it really folks, doesn't matter one way or, way or another, like like what the substance is, as long as they come away with their mm-hmm. headline that they can push on Newsmax or because they love the poorly of, educated. That's right. That's right. Because they're not they're not going to dig into anything else. They they're they're not going to like put. They're going to see the headline. They're going to see people yammering about the headline and parsing the the headline, and they they have no interest or desire to get into the details whatsoever that that doesn't concern them they just want to create a negative stink and have whatever political uh, impact that's that's going to have the the idea that that if you actually look at it it completely falls apart like that's they'll just move on to the next next thing once that's that's exposed to enough people and th- then they'll find something else in the same way that they drag the legal cases out forever and ever and and, and ever as long as they possibly can they just they'll move on to the next thing and it won't matter to them a single bit because there's no evidence and never has been ev- any evidence of of uh, corruption from uh, uh, f- uh, from uh, Joe Biden uh and there's tons of evidence of corruption just like enormous amounts of evidence of corruption from Trump when he was uh, president. So, I mean, it's just, it, it, you, you, yeah. you, you can't even begin to compare the two things. It's and just... folks, if you want to know what um, a president having absolute immunity looks like, um, a gentleman who was running against Putin just mm. mysteriously passed away. Yeah, that's right. That's right. After so... he was wrongfully detained and arrested on Trump charges, um, and then his sentence his sentence extended um, from nine years to, on, on top of that, 19 years, and then he just magically dies. Yeah, Alexei Navalny, and if you, like, want Donald Trump back in power, that is exactly the sort of thing that you are going to get. He has said he is going to go after his enemies. Well, Putin goes after his enemies, and this is how he does it. So, uh, if that's the future you want. You can look at Russia and you can look at Vladimir Putin to see exactly what you're going to get. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for being with us today. And I want to encourage everyone to uh, check out This Week Again with Suzanne Posel. And uh, that is going to be coming out on Sunday morning, an excellent compendium of uh, progressive events of the week and and humor and things that you should listen to if you want to get caught up if you have been too busy and and I know you have been very busy to to follow the uh, events of the week this is a good way to fill yourself in uh, so you will not be uh, left out Suzanne thank you so much again for being with us on Face Palm America thank you so much for always having me on Friday makes Friday better for me <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Face Palm America. I want to thank our producers, Ace Elson and Rosabelle Hine. You can, if you like, call us or message us at 202-656-6271. I want to actually read a message here from uh, Jack in New Jersey. He says, 
Good morning, my friend. Keep up the good work. Can you please spread the word to people, especially in the news and podcasts, to stop calling Trump's first trial the hush money case? It is an election interference case. Thank you.